Okay, we're um, going to do something tonight. We're going to do a live, live-ish one. Just waiting to see things start working here. Okay, I think things are starting to happen. I see, I see stuff coming up on my screen. So, um, getting sound? Okay, so now I can hear it. Okay, uh, you were frozen because I haven't started playback yet. This was uh, recorded a little little while ago, like literally minutes ago. Okay, I, I just got in from the shop and uh, turned on a computer and did some email and stuff. I was going to edit this, you know, I just didn't feel like it. It's kind of a quick tip, little unedited gem for you guys. Seeing if anybody's actually tuning in yet before I start the playback. I see there's 11 people here now. I don't see anybody making any comments, but uh, we're going to start this momentarily. You guys remember this little piece of junk CD player that was skipping all over the place, the one that had the battery acid in it. And it's, it's going in the garbage. I mean, this is not something that I'm going to you know, repair or attempt to repair because it's not worth anything. But I just want to show you guys a tip what you can do with CD players. Uh, the problem on this one here, as I explained when I start the video, is it's going to be the spindle motor that's bad. That's why it's skipping, even though it's got 45 second um, anti-skip. What happens is when the bearing starts to wear, the um, disc starts to oscillate, starts to vibrate, and it can cause severe reading errors. And even though there's a big buffer, it can't read the data fast enough to fill the buffer up. And you get the skipping, and it just when this happens, it's you got to replace the motor. But replacing a motor and something like that, this is it's not worth it. So what I'm going to do, well, I'll show you. What I'm going to do. I'm going to try to get this motor to work, and you'll see that it actually will work. It's going to stop the skipping that I was that I had on it. Uh, there's other problems with this, so we're going to take this apart even more and see what uh, is what goes on with it. I see there's. Uh, about 19 of you guys watching now. Let's see. Uh, hi, hi, D. From Vintage Radio 2015. Hi, hi, everybody. Um, so, I say I'm sitting in this in the in the studio here now, in the edit booth. We're going to run this, and you're going to see it's going to come right off the camera here, right, right source file. So, let's uh, start it, and I'll be here to chat with you guys and chat on the keyboard so let's get going now it's a little piece of crap from the other day right you know, skipping it's supposed to have the 45 second skip protection but it, it skips you can hear it I believe I know what's wrong with this thing it's going to be the spindle motor see it's skipping you can hear it The uh, fault is going to probably be the um, spindle motor. I'm going to stop this thing. I guess it's that one. One of these buttons is going to stop this. This button stops it. As you can hear, it's kind of skipping. what the problem on this is, is it's the spindle motor now if we remove the batteries if I spin the spindle motor by hand you might be able to hear it making a racket it's the it's gonna be the bearings in here I think the shot ticket listen hear it I spin it you hear the motor 
So it shouldn't make noise like that. It sounds like the motor's hanging up. Let's, uh, we're either going to fix this thing or we're going to send it up in smoke. But, you know, you guys like to see smoke, I'm sure. I'm going to uh, crank the crap out of this motor, a power supply. Disconnect it, obviously, from the board first so we don't have chips on fire. And uh, we're going to crank the crap out of it and just spin it to death and see whether that will polish up the armature a bit and maybe get some of the crap out of the bearing that is, I'm sure, hanging up a bit. So all the screws out, this thing should pop apart again. After all, we did have it apart the other day. How does it come apart? All right, it doesn't really come apart, does it? It sort of comes apart. There's the laser. This is the motor down here. So if I unplug the motor over here, can't even unplug this stuff because it doesn't come apart, but I can undo the motor plug here. I think. I think it'll come undone. It might break in the process. I don't want to pull the wires up, so I'm going to try to work the plug out. There we go. Okay. Now I can put some power to this motor. We'll start out at like 6 volts, probably crank this thing up to about 12 or 15. Just get this motor just a screaming and see if that'll stop it from uh, see if that'll stop it from making all that racket that it's making. Doesn't seem like it's doing anything, does it? motor does not appear to be turning. I'll do the laser here just so I can get a bit more, a little bit more slack on here. Oh, you know what? I think there's probably a piece of tape over here. Yeah, there is. There's a little bit of uh, insulation. There's some tape over the motor here over the contacts I guess to stop it from shorting out. Peel that off. Would you hear this motor just scream? Yeah, it's a screamer. And it's still not doing anything. What the heck? That time it started to move. not fast enough. How about 11 volts? 12 volts? Shall we go for like 14 volts? Oops. They're sounding any less noisy now. Let's 
Still sounds a bit raspy. We'll try spinning it the opposite direction. We'll put the Poor little bearings. I don't know if I can get any lubricant into this or not. Is it open back here? Sometimes we can access the back and actually get some oil into it. So we try spitting some oil compounds. Spray some cleaner in there. Get a bit of contact cleaner into the back of the motor here and see whether that'll stop this thing from skipping. What do you think? Shall we try that? Hmm. Neutral. All right, let's uh, throw this back together. I don't think I unplugged that, but we'll throw this back together and we'll see if it skips or whether it plays. Plug in. I think these were probably in these little blister packs that you could have bought at the time for probably twenty twenty four ninety five or something, right? I mean these were these were just unbelievably cheap when they were around. Now, lots of people bought these things just because they were cheap and they didn't want a name brand one because you know they'd get dropped or stolen or broken. Is it going to skip or is it going to play? Well, it's not skipping. Oh, the switch does 
button sonar frame we worked on. I wonder if the ribbon cable got damaged when I took it apart. The buttons don't appear to be doing anything. But it's not skipping. These weren't working before I took it apart, so they may have got damaged prior time when it came apart. But as you can hear, it's not skipping anymore. Cool, huh? Little trick. Little trick you can do for CD players that are acting up. What happens is the, the motor itself is, um, the motor itself has got a problem and, and it, it, the, the just crap in the bearings and stuff was causing it to oscillate. So I don't know why the buttons aren't working on it now. I guess I'll have to check that and see why the buttons aren't working. Maybe I can fix them. I think we know why the buttons aren't working. It's not the ribbon cable that severed it's like the battery acid. When the battery's corroded in this thing the battery acid got onto the board as well. You can see it here. That's why the buttons don't work. So I say this thing, it is beyond repair. I just wanted to show you guys a little trick you can do with these motors when they, when you get a skipping CD player. You can crank the crap out of the power to the motor. Just be sure you disconnect it. Otherwise you're going to blow up a chip. Actually, that chip looks that chip looks familiar, doesn't it? That chip almost looks like it's one that was from a VH6575FV. Is that from one of the machines that I've got with a bad chip? Hmm. Anyway, yeah, see? Lots of corrosion in here. That's why it's probably why this thing's sounding as bad as it is. And corrosion over here. That's likely why the key buttons aren't working. Is that uh, there's a short here. It, it plays, but uh, it uh, can't control it. Again, these things are not designed to be repaired. They are a throwaway item, but... I just figured for fits and giggles because this thing's garbage. <sighs> Might as well spend some more time on it. Waste some time. Anyway. I'm sure that's why the buttons aren't working. Short. The ribbon cable also could be damaged doesn't look like it but see they really want this thing not coming apart they stick it down with double-sided tape so even trying to remove it you can easily damage it these are definitely not designed to be uh, opened up that's for sure and worked on I don't know if this will make it work or not, but what the heck, hey? Need some of that battery acid out of here. I'll throw it together again and see if the controls work. Oh, it's not coming apart again, that's for sure.
if you're wondering who whose unit this is, it was given to me. Like everything else. All this other junk around here. See what happens this time. Probably nothing. Probably won't work at all now. Oh, what well, do you know? It doesn't work at all now. Hold on. Put that in the hold position. I should have quit while I was ahead. At least it played. You just couldn't do anything with it. Oh, wait a second. Batteries are the. Oh, that's why battery spring is not making a connection. That battery is not in the right position, that, that clip. That's, I didn't seat it in properly when I sent it back in off the take it apart again, but we'll see whether it works first. We'll just kind of put the battery in like that and see if it actually works. Oh, there it goes. It's starting on now. Let's see if the buttons work. Still won't change tracks, you see. It's stuck on the track that it's on. That's me squeezing the cabinet. Anyway. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got a button that's stuck here. That might explain why the buttons aren't working. Oops. No. Still no good. None of the buttons work. Like even the volume button on here doesn't work. So this thing is garbage. It's but this was basically just to uh, demonstrate to you that if you have a motor that's going bad, you can spin it up fast, and uh, it will quite often make it work for a while. It's gonna it'll act up again for sure. But you can usually get the thing to work for a while. Anyway, this is junk. It's going to the recyclers now for sure. I just wanted to show you guys that little trick with um, spinning the crap out of the motor and put a little bit of cleaner in there to kind of lubricate the bearings because that's quite a common fault. When CD players don't play or skip, it's usually one of two things. It's usually either the spindle motor is shot or the optical pickup is shot. Those are the two most common things. Sometimes on some of the older players you get some capacitors in the power supply that drive the laser. Usually that sometimes can happen. But um, usually it's the spindle motor that's gone bad. That's the number one cause is the spindle motor goes bad. Thanks for watching.
What are you guys still doing here? It's over. It's over. You, guys you can go. Here. Bye. It's over. It's over. You guys